Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part seven of my pre-calculus tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover quadratic equations, quadratic formulas, completing the square, and a whole bunch more, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so an equation that can be arranged in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, where a cannot be zero is what we call a quadratic equation. Now you can solve them in different ways. Let's say you want to solve one by factoring. So for example, let's say you have x times x minus 5, which would be equal to 0. Well, we know that if x minus 3 equals 0, then x would be equal to 3. Or x would be equal to 0 based off of something called the zero product property. And what the zero product property states is that a product can only equal zero if at least one factor equals zero. So common sense. Let's work through another one here. Let's say we have x plus two and two x minus eight is equal to zero. Well, this would work out to x plus two equals zero, or two x minus eight is going to equal to zero, which means that x has a value of negative two, or it has a value of four. One thing that's important to understand is if you have x squared equal to 9, for example, that x squared in this situation would be plus or minus square root of 9, and x would be equal to plus or minus 3. And just always remember, whenever you take the root of both sides, to always use plus or minus. Let's work through another example here. Let's say you have 4 x squared plus two-thirds x plus 15. Well, we can simplify this to be 4x x plus 5 plus 3x plus 5, which is going to simplify down to x plus 5 and 4x plus 3. And then we would know that x plus 5 is equal to 0, or 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. And in that situation, we know that the value of x is going to be equal to negative 5, or x is going to be equal to negative 3 fourths. Another important concept to understand is completing the square. Now, an expression is a perfect square if it is equal to two expressions multiplied times themselves. So, for example, let's say you have x squared minus 6x plus 9. This is a perfect square because it factors to x minus 3 and x minus 3. And, of course, you can simplify this down just by saying x minus 3 squared. Let's work through another problem here. Let's say we have x squared plus 2x minus 7 equal to 0. Well, what we want to do here is add 7 to both sides, and we would end up getting x squared plus 2x equal to 7. We can divide the coefficient of x by 1 half and square then. So this would be 2 over 1 times 1 over 2 squared, which would be equal to 1 squared, which of course is equal to 1. And then we can add the result to both sides, which is going to give us x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 7 plus 1, which is then going to 
Simplify to x squared plus 2x plus 1, which will equal 8. We can now factor our perfect square, which is going to end up being x plus 1 squared is equal to 1. Then we can find the square root of both sides. That is going to leave us with x plus 1 squared equal to, remember, plus or minus, square root of 8. We can find the square root of both sides then, and we get x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus square root of 8, which is going to be equal to 2 times 4. And if we simplify this down, this becomes 2 square root of 2. Hence, x plus 1 is going to be equal to plus or minus 2 square root of 2, which means that x is going to be equal to negative 2 square root of 2 minus 1, or 2 square root of 2 minus 1. Okay? And now we're going to save ourselves a lot of time because we are going to introduce the quadratic formula. What it says is if we have our quadratic formula, so let's go and put that inside of here. So this is going to be a x squared plus b x plus c is equal to zero. Well, we can use the quadratic formula that says if you want to find x, just plug all of those values into this formula and I will give you x. And b squared minus four a c over 2a. Let's work through a problem here. So let's say we have 4x squared plus 23x plus 15 is equal to 0. Well, that means that x is going to be equal to negative 23 plus or minus 23 squared minus 4 times 4 times 15 over 2 times 4, which is going to be equal to negative 23 plus or minus square root of 529 minus 240 over 8. And this means that x is going to be equal to negative 23 plus 17 over 8, which is going to be equal to negative 3 fourths, or x is going to be equal to negative 23 minus 17 over 8, which is going to simplify to negative 5. Now, I didn't originally plan on doing this, but I'm going to cover it anyway. Okay, so let's talk about how we can go and solve rational equations. So, for example, let's say we have three using quadratic equation, uh, the quadratic formula. All right, so we've talked about rational equations before. Now, of course, if we have something like x over 15 like this, we can just use cross multiplication. And this would be 3 times 15 is equal to um, 5x squared, which is going to be 45 equal to 5x squared, which is going to be x squared is equal to 9, and x is equal to 3. Well, now let's go and let's look at something a little bit more complicated and how we can use the quadratic formula to solve it. All right, so let's say we have x minus 5 over 2x plus 4 equal to 2x plus 3 over x minus 2. Well, we can go and convert this to x minus 5, cross multiplication again, x minus 2 equal to 2x plus 4 and 2x plus 3. We go and multiply this out. This works out to x squared minus 
5x minus 2x plus 10, which is equal to 4x squared plus 8x plus 6x plus 12. Threw in our quadratic formula up there. Okay, so let's continue simplifying this. This is going to be x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to 4x squared plus 14x plus 12. Subtract our 12s and we'll get x squared minus 7x minus 2 is equal to 4x squared plus 14x. We can subtract 14x and end up with x squared minus 21x minus 2 is equal to 4x squared. And then subtract 4x squared. Let's move over to the other side so you can actually see this. So I'm going to say negative 3x squared minus 21x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now what we can do is we can solve this with the quadratic formula. So we can say x is equal to 21 plus or minus, and this is a negative. That's the reason why it's 21 instead of negative 21, plus or minus square root of 21 squared minus 4 times negative 3 times negative 2, and this is 2, negative 3. And if we know this, we will get x is equal to negative 21 plus the square root of 417 over 6 and x is equal to negative 21 minus square root of 417 over 6. And there you go. There is a rundown of quadratic equations, the quadratic formula used in multiple different ways, completing the square, and also using the quadratic formula to solve rational equations. Hopefully you guys found that useful, and like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.